Hello everyone, my name is Nicholas Wiley, and today what we're going to be doing is we're going to be, going to be doing a von Neumann stability analysis for the Frank Nicholson method of implicit differencing that we performed in the last video. Now, let me share the marker. There we go. So before we get in, into anything, I'd like to explain what we have on the board. Now, the first thing that we have, um, let's see, is we have this U term over here. Now, U is going to be equal to the thermal diffusivity multiplied by our time step delta T and divided by 2 multiplied by our, um, our step in the x direction, delta x uh, squared. Now, what is this going to have to do with anything that we're doing today? So what we're going to be trying to do today is we're going to try to prove that the left-hand side of our equation, which contains E, J, comma, N plus 1, is equal, sorry, equal to T, J, comma, N. Our N plus 1 is the time step after, and this N term is where we are presently. And we want to prove that this these are related by some term right here, which we are going to call omega. Now, what is omega? Omega is pretty much just a factor of u. It is any value of u, and what we're trying to say by doing this is that omega is less than or equal to 1. Compared to what we had before, which was that u Yes, was that u, no, sorry, that r was less than or equal to 0 0.5. Saying that this is less than or equal to 1 is very good for us. It shows that it's a lot more stable than what we had before. And that's really what we're looking for, and that's what we proved in the last video by showing that our time step was 1. Now, how are we going to do this? Well, we're going to start with the equations that we found in the last video. As you can see at the top right here, we have our left-hand side and our right-hand side. Now... In addition to that, what we also have is we have this right here, which is a solution to our, um, our partial di differential equation that we've had before. Um, all of this is in our, one of our previous videos. This was in the explicit differ differencing video, so I'd go ahead and check that one out. This was in the previous video, but this right here was in the um, von Neumann stability analysis for explicit differencing, as well as all of these terms right here. Now, what we're going to go ahead and try and do is we're going to try and get the left side, which is going to be our t j comma n plus 1, and we're going to make an expression for this. We're also going to have an expression for t j comma n, which is going to be our right side. Now, what we can go ahead and do is we can go ahead and start this. Now, how are we going to do this? We're going to relate them by these factors that we have right here. So let's go ahead and get into this. So up first, we'll do the tj and plus 1, our next time step. So up here, we're going to have negative u. And then we have that j plus 1 term. And if we look down here, we have this j plus 1. And how does that relate? That's going to relate by e to the ij delta x. And then the next up, we have the plus 1 plus 2u. And then this is simply just going to be left as so, because we are multiplying by this factor right here. Up next, we have the minus u. And we're going to relate that by the j minus 1, which we have right here. So that's going to be e to the negative i k delta x. So that is going to be the left side of our equation, as we can see. And in addition, we also have this right here which is the tj comma n, which is going to be very familiar to us. Um, well, I guess it's just pretty much the same. Oh, sorry. Wait, let me rewrite this. We have left hand, mark is 9, left hand side is going to be equal to tj n plus 1. We'll rewrite that. We'll also rewrite this. Our right hand side is going to be equal to t j comma n. We're going to, have to do the exact same thing we just did. So we're going to have u plus 1 minus, oops, sorry, not just u. Since we're at that plus 1, the j plus 1 term, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to use this right here. So we're going to have e to the i k delta x. In addition, we're going to move on to 1 minus 2u, and these are very similar. If you'd like to, you can skip a little bit ahead. Uh, it's a lot of repetition, but we do like to make sure that our point gets across and that we're doing this the right way. Now, in the end, we're going to have plus, oops, yes, plus u, and we're going to multiply by a factor of negative i, k, 
okay, delta x. I'm going to go ahead and make a quick cut. I'm going to clean all of this up, and I'm going to write down a couple of relationships that we're going to use. Now we're going to take advantage of the fact that e to the ix minus e to the negative ix, which is going to be a part of Euler's law, is going to equal 2 cosine of k delta x for us, as we have i times x, and our x in this case is going to be what's multiplied by i, which is going to be k delta x. Now what we're going to do is we're going to isolate these equations. And I actually have this written wrong. So it's this multiplied by that. Sorry. So what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to isolate this on one side, and then what we're going to end up with is we're going to end up with something along the lines of this right here. And what we're going to have is we're going to have a quick, um, quick little cancellations that we're going to do. Um, we'll be back in a second. What I've gone ahead and done is I've gone ahead and cleaned everything up, and I've gotten this ready for the home stretch. So as you can see, I've gone ahead and rewritten this right here. And then after that, what I've gone ahead and done is I've gone ahead and factored everything by 2u. Now, why have I done that? You're going to see in a second. I'm trying to reorganize everything to make it into terms that are matching. So we've gone over here, and we've, multiplied, we've factored by, um, we've gone ahead and factored by um, 2u. So we end up with this right here. And as you can see, we have pretty similar terms right here. So all we have to do is, all we have to do is multiply this. This little term right here, let's go ahead and get the red out. All of that, we're going to multiply by negative 1, so we can end up with matching terms right here. Why do we want that? Well, we can make some important relationships known, and then we can kind of put everything together for the final stretch. So, what do we know about u? Mark your staling. What do we know about u? u is going to be equal to alpha, our thermal diffusivity, multiplied by our prime temp t, and divided, divided by 2 multiplied by delta x squared. Now, what do we know about all these terms? We know that all of these are going to be equal. Well, not equal to. We know that they're all going to be positive. So we know that u is always going to be positive no matter what happens. Now, what else do we know? We also know that cosine right there must be cosine k delta x must be less than 1 and greater than negative 1. So, looking at this, if we have a subtracting minus, subtracting minus, if we have a minus cosine, if we're towards the negative 1 aspect, this is going to become even greater positive, but it can't be 1 exactly. So what we know is that this is always going to be positive as well, so we know that all of this will be positive. So what we can do is we can just call that what we've been trying to since the beginning, the whole point, from the very first second. We talked about omega. So now what this is going to become is it's going to become 1 minus omega over 1 plus omega. Now what's so good about this relationship that we have right here? What we know is that omega cannot be greater. What we know is that this relationship cannot be greater than 1. Omega cannot, this relationship cannot be greater than 1. Omega cannot be greater than 1. Now why is that? At its very maximum value, Omega can simply just be zero, so that's one. Other than that, it's not going to make any difference. So what we know is that this doesn't hit super high numbers. As we saw with the explicit differentiation, we saw these big, big oscillations. So for this, we are very stable because of the fact that we aren't going to tend towards infinity nor negative infinity. So what we've gone ahead and done is we've gone ahead and improved the von Neumann um, Stability analysis for our implicit dif differentiation, we've gone ahead and proven that this right here, our omega term, through implicit dif differentiation, differencing, is that it's going to be stable no matter what. A lot more stable than what we've done explicitly, and we can thank Crank Nicholson for that, I guess. So I hope you enjoyed uh, these spur of videos, and I hope to see you in the next few.